and welcome to the latest in our series of videos introducing you to the basics of programming and in this video we are going to look at the idea of input process output and how this relates to the programs that you write uh, and this is an, an idea that's very important in computing and without input process output most of the technology that you use your phones your consoles your sky boxes all of those things wouldn't work wouldn't do very much so let's just have a little reminder about what input process output means what we're really talking about is that ed any computer system needs to have data um, to operate. It needs to have data come into the system so that the computer can do stuff with it and make things happen. So let's see how that works. If we had a game console, for instance, uh, not much would happen if you were playing a game um, unless you used the gamepad to control your character. So unless you click the joypad or, or press the buttons, not much happens because no instructions will be going to the character, no instructions will be going to the program to make the character move. So when we press A on a gamepad, what that actually effectively does is it sends an input into the computer, into the program to say the player wants to jump, it wants to do something. So that's data that comes into our program. Then what needs to happen is the computer, once it's got that information, needs to do something with it. So the CPU, or the brain of the computer, works out then, okay, well they press jump, how high or how far are they going to jump? And it will work that out so that it can make the jump happen. And obviously this is happening in the blink of an eye really, really quickly. And then the last phase of that is output, because we want to actually see this happen, don't we? And we don't know that the computer's done anything uh, or, or has processed without us seeing the results of that processing. So in this case, in our game, it's the character jumping or moving that does it. So input process output is quite an important concept and it's behind pretty much every single system that we use. Um, let's have a look at how this works. Um, we're going to start to see how it works in a programming context in Scratch and then if you want to um, if you want to see how it works in Python I'll link a video at the top of the screen uh, and then you can try this out in Python but the important thing to tell you is that it works exactly the same way in principle in Scratch as it does in Python. Okay so we've moved into uh, Scratch now and you can see we've got a program which we used in our last video which is basically a program to, to make our scratch capture a square and remember we created a variable called length that would tell us kind of how long we wanted the sides of our shape to be so in this case 100 and then each time it moves it moves length steps so in this case it would run 100 steps if i click uh, the, the arrow uh, sorry the green flag there we go scratch cut draws our square and it moves 100 uh, if i wanted to do something different i'd have to go back into the program and change it so if i change the value to 200 this time and i click the square that's what happens so you can see what happens when we change the data in the program from within the program like that but what happens if our program was running and we wanted the user to be able to change the size of the square without having to change the program itself what we could do is add an input into our program to allow the user to choose the length of the square so let's see how that might work so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move the code, break the code apart temporarily like that and I'm going to go over here to uh, sensing and from the sensing uh, blocks I'm going to drag ask in there and so what this is actually going to do is it's literally going to ask a question, it's going to ask, it's going to pause the program until the user actually types something in so I'm going to type in uh, how, whoops, how long like the sides to be a bit of a long question but never mind and then it's going to wait for an answer now what we need to happen is for that answer to become the value of length so we want that answer to become the value of that so let's see how we do that within sensing also we see we've got a blue block here another one called answer so I'm just going to put drag that into there so it says set length to answer so if I now put that back and I click uh, the button, let's try to run it and see, and you can see that it's paused. How long would I like the sides to be? So if I type in 100, 
it's worked there we go so it's drawn my square and if I run the program again let's try it again just to show you that it works again 200 so there is the input part of my program there is the process part of my program because it's actually setting a variable once setting a value it's doing something with the data that the users put into the program and there is the output of my program there is the results of the computer setting the value of length to be answer so input process and output that is the key kind of principle of computing and you'll probably end up using it in nearly every single program that you write so have a go at doing this yourself in scratch and then when you think you've mastered it in scratch see if you could do the same thing in python and as i've said the principle is almost exactly the same so good luck have fun and see how you get on and i'll see you in the next video